there it is. Well, that sucks. Okay. Um, we thank you for mentioning it though. <laughs> Better now than in like ten minutes. Yeah. So uh, we've got the HTTP protocol, and that's sort of what the the language the web browser speaks. And I roughly sort of walk through there what happens when a web browser uh, speaks that language, kind of how it works. But like I said, all that stuff it probably would be helpful for you to actually see what I'm talking about. So we can actually like see a request getting made. At least when I was learning the stuff, this helped me a lot. And we're gonna use our friend Netcat again to do this. So this is another one of those exercises where I'm gonna do it. And uh, you're welcome to slash, you probably should do it along with me. Um, I think it's a cool little exercise. So I'm gonna open up another a terminal again here. I'm going to type in my terminal. I'm just following these instructions on the on the slide, but I'm going to type into my terminal sudo sudo space nc space dash l space 80. Now, if you remember from yesterday, nc dash l will start a TCP server. And 80 means it listens on that port, port 80. Remember, 80 is the HTTP port. Ryan, I'm sorry. Could you just spell that one more time? I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no problem. Um, Thank you. This is in the terminal, right? Yep, this is in the terminal. If you uh, take a look at my screen here, it's right here. Um, or it's right here. So sudo space nc space dash l space 80. Um, yeah, or Mel put it in the chat. Perfect. And when you're going to run that, it's actually going to ask you for your password. The reason why it's going to ask you for your password or using the sudo thing in front of the command, it's kind of a, a bit more of a technical thing that we're probably not going to get into today. But just know that in order to run Netcat on any port under 1024, remember yesterday we talked about those ports under 1024, sort of the reserved ports, the ports that like are have predetermined use cases already. In order to listen to one of those ports, you have to put sudo in front of NC for it to work. And you've also got to put in your password to your computer to make that work. And I'll put that in successfully and sort of it'll it'll run and it'll be good. But that's what that pseudo is about. Cool. So, say that again. I have no idea where my what my password is anymore. Is it the same yeah. one I used to log on? Yep, the same one you used to log on. Okay. Um, also, I should mention, as you type your password, you're not going to see the characters that show up, and that's totally expected. So just type it as if you don't see the characters, and just assume it's good, and hit enter, and then it should be should work. If it's the wrong password, it'll tell you. But anyway, cool. So we got this up here. Now, I'm going to do the second part of this, which is I'm going to go to this in my web browser, localhost colon 80. Now, if you remember from yesterday, localhost, making a request to that local loopback interface back around to our cells, 127.0.0.1, that whole thing, and then colon 80, port 80. So we're going to tell, we're, we're effectively telling the web browser right now, please make a request to ourselves on port 80. Localhost, colon 80. Okay. Then I'm going to hit enter. And what I'm going to see is it's sort of just going to like spin, it's like not going to finish. And that's expected. Because if I go back over here to my terminal, you're going to see I've got a bunch of text in it now. Remember how yesterday, how when we sort of made our back and forth request response thing with, uh, with Netcat, how we typed some text into the client side and that showed up in the server side? In this case, the web browser is acting as the client and our nc-l80 thing locally here is acting as the server side. And what you're seeing in here, this raw text, this is an HTTP request. So this is the raw text, the raw question the browser is asking the server. And it's still spinning because I haven't given it back a response here yet. And it's just going to keep spinning. It's just going to be waiting. It's like, I'm waiting for a response. I'm loading. I'm waiting. Um, and I'm just never going to give it a response. I'm just going to hit Control C to terminate it. It's going to sort of fail and say it can't get to the site. But uh, that's that's sort of the exercise. So. If you get a chance, uh, try that locally here. I'm uh, 
if you're having trouble getting that to work, um, let me know. I'm sorry, I'm not clear on what we were supposed to get to work. I typed in the pseudo NC and typed in my password. And now what? Go to a local host? Yeah, so type in pseudo NC L80. And then in a web browser, go to localhost colon 80. Okay. And hit enter. And what, what you should see is something like this. So are you talking to your terminal through the browser? What's happening here? Yeah, so my browser is making an HTTP request. It's sort of that top arrow going from client to server. My terminal here with nc-l running in it is a server, is a TCP server. So my web browser here is making a connection to the TCP server. This is like the, effectively over on the one, one, one excuse me, my web browser is acting as like an nc localhost 80 thing. It's sort of connecting to my, my server running in my terminal. And I can type sort of whatever I want in that, uh, that client side of it and sort of see that in the terminal. In this case, my web browser is doing that typing automatically. And then the question it's asking is this thing. And its question is kind of formatted a little funky. And we're going to talk about what this decodes into in a second here. But this is equivalent to like the sort of like a uh, FAV, whatever thing we were doing yesterday, like the IST, whatever. And we haven't, this is sort of like the question the web browser was asking the server. All right, can I, I ask you, I'm just getting a search. I type in my search bar mm -hmm. and it just brings up a search page. Yeah. So run. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, share your screen. Let's take a look. Okay. Looks like, um, oh, there it goes. Ah, you want localhost colon 80 without a space in between. Okay. Huh. So, uh, but you're going to have to take that and copy that into your, your bar up top, not into Google. Oops. Ah, don't, don't click on it. Type out the full thing and enter. I think that's part of what's... Uh, the, the autocomplete, I think, is screwing it up a little bit. So if you just type out localhost colon 80 all yourself and then hit enter. Okay. Well, I don't know why it said that it can't be reached, but it did show up over there on the side. <laughs> okay. Mine says the same. Is there, does it give you, um, uh, does it not connect if you got your password wrong? If you don't have your password wrong, it should show up in the side in the terminal. It should say incorrect password, try again, sort of thing. Um, if you'd like, uh, share your screen and we can take a look. Oh, let me get for a minute. In general, though, if uh, folks have had success, can they give me a reaction in Slack just so I, I've got a rough idea of how people are doing here? Just a thumbs up or something like that. Cool. I'm seeing some thumbs up. Sweet. Okay. I think, uh, oh, Artrell, you got your hand raised. This is a real random question. So I'm looking at the the text that populated when we did the local host. I noticed that in your computer and Jennifer's computer right below where it said connection keep alive, it said something about cache and like max age like zero. Mine mm -hmm. doesn't show that. I was just curious. Curious. Yeah. So there are sort of, well, we're going to talk about it in a second, but there are sort okay. of like differences in between the data that different web browsers are going to send in certain contexts. And I have a feeling that maybe we've got some different configuration on our system that's sort of resulting in different requests being sent. Okay. But we've got a whole day about those things you're looking at there called headers. So, okay. yeah. Cool. Okay. I saw a lot of thumbs up, so I'm going to keep moving forward. Um, okay. Uh,
So this is an HTTP request. Um, and you should see something roughly like this. The way you can kind of know it worked is at the very top, it should say something like get slash HTTP 1.1. Um, that's a good sign if you see that. So we're going to sort of de deconstruct this piece by piece, this whole text bit here. Um, the first thing you're going to see in this text, the first word is going to be something like get. Now, this is what's called an HTTP method. And these are always capitalized. Um, and it's usually a single word, and it's usually one of get, post, put, patch, delete, sort of this list right here, one of those options. And it sort of describes like the action the web browser is taken, taking. You can kind of think of it as like the verb in the sentence, the proverbial sentence that's being asked here. So typically, web browsers make get requests, sort of the default. Like they want to sort of get a thing, like get some HTML located at a location or sort of uh, uh, fetch data or fet like get an image located on a web server somewhere. But each of the different actions sort of mean different things. And we're going to sort of talk about these later on in, in this module. Um, the ones you're probably going to see the most often, though, are going to be get and post. I would say get and post are the most common. And then sort of all the rest of them are less common below those. So the next part is the path. The path is sort of, you can think of it like the subject of the sentence. But the way the path is structured, it's sort of a slash separated series of words. Um, for example, like you might have something like a slash user, if you're going to like a page that lists a bunch of users, or maybe um, like a slash FAQ, if you're going to like a FAQ page on a website. If you don't have a path at the end of your, of your sort of URL in your web browser, or you, you don't include a path, it's just going to be a slash. It's kind of the default. So when, in our case, going back over to the request we made here, we just went to localhost colon 80. So there was no sort of path bit, no sort of, like if you look up here, sort of we have like a, a path thing going on here, presentation D1, this whole thing. There was none of that. So in our case, it's just a slash. So it's, or it's, it's nothing. So it just becomes a slash. And it's, it's, I should also say it's a forward slash and not a backslash. That's quite important. In general on Unix systems, so your Macs and uh, kind of the web inherits from that tradition too. You tend to use forward slashes for paths, and for Windows, it tends to be backslashes. Just maybe a bit of a detail there. Um, but again, it's kind of like the, the subject, the sort of what of the sentence. Version. So this is the third part. These are all sort of space separated words on the first line. The version tends to be HTTP 1.1. In the case of uh, this module or this sort of two week period, we're only going to be talking about HTTP 1.1. Um, why this is important, though, is uh, having a version and a protocol means that you can allow it to change in the future. So if you have like a protocol, it's a version one, and then you decide you want to add some more stuff to it, you can now make that version two, and the client can read that version and be like, oh, this is a new version, and sort of can have st special logic to parse the, the, the new language kind of that's version two. So it allows you to sort of extend your protocol and add more things in the future. HTTP 1.1 is probably the most common version of HTTP out there right now. HTTP 2 is sort of a thing and is gaining market share. Um, I'd say over the past like year or two, it's really started to gain a lot more market share. And there's actually such things as an HTTP uh, 3 and 4 too, but those are like very bleeding edge and no one's really talking about them yet, unless you like work at Google or something like that. So it's a uh, Generally, HTTP 1.1 is what we're going to be dealing with, um, but you may encounter HTTP 2 in the future, but generally everything we're going to talk about in these next two weeks is going to apply to HTTP 2 as well. Um, but yeah, HTTP 1.1, I think, is, is really the, the place to start with. Okay, headers. So Artrell, this is sort of uh, the thing you were looking at before here. Um, you'll notice that below that first line, you have a bunch of sort of like 
pairs of like thing colon value. And these are called headers. So think of headers as like contextual information you can include in a request to sort of give the server metadata about it. So in general, like this is information like a which what's the what's the web browser making the request or what's the format of the the contents of the request you're going to get to in a second or like uh what uh what's another good one oh like uh what sort of credentials do i have the sort of do i have access to this data that's being requested um and we're going to talk about all this stuff sort of in a, a future future uh, day here but for now just Think of it as metadata. Think of it as sort of included extra data in a request. Um, I do want to mention, though, that there's a lot of sort of things we're going to be talking about on how to include metadata in a request. There's sort of a lot of different means you can do it. And this is one of, at least off the top of my head, three we're going to talk about in this class. So it's a, you're going to find that like there's a lot of sort of ways to do things, and none of them are necessarily right, but like there's just a lot of, a lot of options. And this is like one way you can specify information in a request. This works really well when you have things that's like, like sort of a labeled data. Like you sort of have like a, a series of things that all have like a label or like a name and sort of an associated like piece of content to go along with it. Um, so that's why, and there's a lot of these sort of headers that are standard and that's typically, they sort of follow that format. Um, I'll also mention real quick, you'll notice the way these headers are formatted is kind of particular. They tend to be every word in them is uppercased, and then they have dashes in between them. So like see here, see here accept encoding is like uppercase A, accept, dash, uppercase E encoding. And that's actually kind of important. Um, this, this, this sort of way of structuring this text has a name that crazy programmers called it called train case. And the reason why they call it that is it looks like a bunch of train cars stacked up with little couplers. Yeah, I know, it's kind of cheesy, but... It works, I guess. Um, so typically you want your HTTP header names to be in train case. The values can kind of be whatever you want. You'll see some of them are numbers. Some of them are sort of just like plain text. Some of them are other things. Um, yeah. Now I wanna also, I wanna mention one last thing here too, which is that uh, we have that first line and then you have a new line, a single new line. Then you've got a bunch of headers and every header is on its own new line. So it's the header name, colon space, the header value, enter. Header name, colon space, value, enter. That format is very important. Just like yesterday when sort of you saw how, when you typed out your protocol, your my contrived thing we were all working through, like if you sort of made the word plural, you capitalized it, like all those were details that the computer like really sort of found important. Like this is gonna be the same sort of thing. Only this protocol is gonna be probably a little less forgiving, to be honest, because it's sort of very well defined what the computer is expecting. And if you don't give it that information correctly, like it's just going to be like, I don't know what you're saying. Try again. So again, like the first line, new line, and then a, a header name, colon space, header value, enter. Header name, colon space, header value, enter. That format. Okay. Lastly here, we've got the request body. Now this is the one of the other ways you can include metadata in a request. Think of the, the headers. As, the, the headers are like a bunch of sort of key value pairs. So like paired information. The body is just like a big sort of chunk of text. So imagine you wanted to do something like submit a form or something like that, or submit like a, a you had like type a bunch of stuff into a text box, click like a submit button. Generally, the way you might represent that is by taking that content, text contents in that box and making that the body of a request you're making to a web server. Because it's just sort of like a big sort of chunk of unstructured data. It's sort of just all there together. It doesn't really make sense to try to separate it and stick it into headers in some way. It's just sort of like, it sort of acts as its own it's sort of a large, uh, large bit of data. Um, this is optional. And importantly, Bodies are not allowed in get requests. So the method, when the method is get, you cannot have a body. You can have headers. And someone's going to ask me why. 
And I will be honest that I don't know, and this is just how it is. It's kind of weird and arbitrary. And there are actually some really weird non-conforming pieces of software that actually do use bodies and get requests. So occasionally, very, very occasionally you run into it, but like it is it is not the norm. Um, get requests, you can I can say pretty much certainly do not have bodies. Um, yeah, and because our our request was a get request, I can't show you an example of it in what we just made, but we'll get to the body later in a second. And you can actually see a real example of that working. So here's an example. Oh, well, here we go. Reading my own mind. How's that? Um, here's an example post request with the body. So we see how we, it starts with post now instead of get. Our path is slash users. And then we've got our name, or sorry, our version of HTTP 1.1. So that's sort of our first line. Then we've got a single new line, so a single enter. Then we type a few headers, content type, text plain, enter, content type, content, content length 44, enter. And what you'll notice here is that after the headers, to sort of separate the headers from the body, there's actually two new lines in a row. This is really important because if you think about, if you were just going like word by word as a, as a computer would and sort of reading through this, you get through that first line, you finish doing that, you hit enter, okay, you're starting in the header, you type header name, header value, enter, header name, header value. If you type enter and you start typing your body right away, the computer's going to think it's just another header. Like it doesn't, there's no way it can sort of determine that that's not another header because it's just on a new line, just like the headers were. So that's why the two new line thing is so important because if you don't do the two new line thing, then you're going to have a, the computer is not going to be able to know that the, your body isn't just a header. This is a, I'm really trying to drive this point home because we're going to be doing some exercises in a bit here. And this is one of the places in the past I've seen students struggle the most, like single new line in between, uh, between the first line and headers, sing, a new line after each header, but then a double new line from the headers to the body. Cool. Okay. And also just like yesterday, Feel free to interrupt me if you have questions. Um, oh, Artrell, perfect. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm trying to follow what you're saying. So if someone was typing the, uh, I guess that method post slash users HTTP, um, after they got the 1.1, they press enter, write the next line, then enter then the next line again. But when it's time to go to the body, it's two spaces? Yep, two enters. Two enters rather. Yeah, right. so you effectively have an empty line and that's what tells it to move on to the body. All right, now, after that, are we the ones who would type in the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog? Yep, you would type out this whole thing if you're gonna make a request. All right, now, would the computer be the one to put in the 44 for the length or would we have to count out all the spaces and put it in there manually? Great question. Um, typically, so tomorrow, I'll, I'll let the cat out of the bag here. Today, we're going to make these requests by hand. But in typical sort of math class style, we're going to do it by hand the first day. And the second, the next day, we're going to learn a, about a tool to do it for us and make it easier. But like, it's good to know how this stuff works behind the scenes because it allows you to sort of troubleshoot and think through the process a little bit better. So for today, yeah, you're going to have to sort of manually calculate that length. And you're right, that content length header, it refers to the length of the body, as you're probably suspecting. Um, Tomorrow, though, and for pretty much the rest of the class, the computer is going to add that header for you automatically. It's just going to look at the length of the body and be like, oh, okay, I'll stick that header in there. All right, because I was confused if, like, that's what we had to do. I'm like, man, that's, take, that's going to take some time. Yeah, and today it's going to be a little tedious. But okay. Yeah. Good question. Great. Cool. If there's nothing else, I'll keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. Single new line and double new line, are those commands? Good question. I maybe should update this to uh, enter would be better. So you want to hit return or enter once between each of those. Okay. So you type this out, you hit enter once, you type this out, you hit enter once, you type this out, you hit enter once, and then you hit enter again. So you can hit it twice to sort of go to the body. And it's sort of the double part there. We're gonna we're gonna practice this in a second, so we'll we'll go through this a few times here. Okay, 
Now we get to talk about the other part of HTTP. So we talked about the request, how that's formatted, but there's also the response. So remember, the request is what the client sends the server and the response is what the server sends the client. So this is sort of like the answer to the question. And because I want to make my demo work here some more, I am going to make, I'm going to send a response back to my web browser. So this was the one that you might have a little tricky, bit of a tricky time doing on your own. If you have the presentation open though, um, and you click on this text box here, and you copy the contents, like hit, like right click and go to like select all or wherever it is, or I guess command A works too, and then copy it. Like you're gonna wanna use this exact contents of this box. Like don't try to just copy it by hand. Like you wanna use like the exact text. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my request demo again. I'm going to start up my uh, my thing here, sudo nc l80, and type my password, do that whole thing. And then over here, I'm going to go to localhost 80. So same thing I did before. I'm going to come over here. Hey, we got my request here. But what's different this time, oops, is I'm going to go over here. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste this in here. What's this doing? Well, my web browser asks the server a question. This is a answer to that question, an HTTP response that I've sort of pre-typed out already. And when I paste it in that terminal and hit enter, that's sending that back to the web browser. So I'm sort of responding to that request manually. And when I go back over to the web browser, you're gonna see, hello world. Isn't that kind of cool? So you're welcome to give this a shot on your own if you'd like. I, I, I'm. Looks like a number of people have the presentation open right now. Um, but and I, I can don't see it. Say that again? Sorry. I'm sorry. I don't remember where the presentation was. Is it oh. the yesterday's outline? Yeah. Uh, let me post it in Slack here. Uh, I looked at today's and I didn't see it. It's the same presentation as yesterday, to be clear. Maybe. Uh, Maybe that's something I need to do. I need to include it in the outline every day. Um, Mel posted it on the chat. So if you want. Oh, perfect. Mel's always one step ahead of me. <laughs> yep, I got it. Cool. Yeah, the reason why you can't just type this out manually is Google Slides with some weird stuff with like double spacing. I can't figure out how to undo. So like this actually, if you like were to paste it in like a thing that has proper spacing looks a lot different with the, the new lines and all that. So that, that's why I bring that up. Um, yeah, I, I guess I, because of that, I'm not gonna say like everyone should try it on their own, but I'll, I'll maybe, uh, if I'll get, give folks maybe like a minute or two if they want to, and then I'll keep moving forward. Yeah, I do want to try it. So I have to be in my terminal and I have to copy and paste that exact text in the box on the right. Yep. And if your request sort of terminated, you may want to sort of cancel out of it and sort of do the little demo before again. Um, it's possible like requests can kind of time out after a while if they have got not, not much in activity. Um, so that, that's possible, but give it a shot either way and you can see. No such file or directory? Oh yeah, you probably need to, uh, you probably just pasted it in your terminal on its own. Um, you've got to sort of run the nc-l80 thing, just like sort of we did yesterday, and then go to it, get the request, sort of get the request to happen, and then after you've done that, paste in your response. Need to, I need to do the sudo nc thing? Yep. Yeah. So if you do sudo nc-l80 in your terminal, and then you hit enter, and then you go to your browser tab you had open before, and you refresh it, effectively, that, that would work. Or, or make a request to it with that localhost colon 80 thing. Once you've done that, you sort of have your request here. And then you can just paste what was in that box. And you should get a response back in your web browser again. It says, hello world, hopefully. 
Ryan, when I put that in, it says Safari cannot connect to the server. So I've been getting that for a while. I've been trying to X out of my terminal to redo that. Hmm. I don't you know, it says it can't connect. Can I share my screen? Yeah, go for it. Let's take a look. Okay. Ah, yeah. So you see there, you did a NC dash one, not dash L, I think. Oh, uh, that's an L. It's an L, just like yesterday. Dash L for listen. Oh my gosh. Okay, thank you. Yep. I'm going to sh stop sharing. Oh, where am I? Oh, okay, thank you. Cool. Um, just uh, generally, I, I think I'm going to move on just because this is a bit more of a tricky thing and might be a good one to do afterwards. Uh, if you want me to, to stay a little bit longer, though, I can. Um, but unless anyone calls me out, I'm going to keep moving. I, I, just have, a, I have a quick question. So yeah. if you um, so using this kind of platform, um, can you also write like HTML, CSS on it and then it'll show up on the on the web page? Yeah. Now, it, I will say if you're going to try that, um, let's let's get a little bit. For, let's finish up today first before you try that because there's a couple of little caveats. But you're totally right, and this is actually how web pages get shown to users. This is how it works. That is awesome. Cool. Okay. Hmm. So. The response, this is a, so I gave, I typed layout like a really sort of small response there. This is what like kind of a more realistic response might look like. And you're going to see some things that look kind of similar to the request. You're going to see some things that look kind of like headers. You're going to see a thing that looks like a body. I even put in my body response body, um, you know, a little too literal, I think there. But these are sort of the parts. You're also going to see a version. Um, and what's important is when you when you have a version in your request, it's actually not necessarily the same version that it's going to be responded with. Like it should be, but the server might be like, I don't actually speak that language. Here's the language I can speak. Maybe you understand this one. Um, in practice, so that's kind of rare. Like everything understands HTTP 1.1, like basically everything, maybe like an old device from like 1998 that hasn't been updated might not, but come on, you're really gonna run into that? Probably not. Um, yeah, so uh, the next part though, after the version is a new thing called a status code and status message. This is actually gonna be really important. Um, just as like, a, like a, a question here, has anyone, heard the phrase before 404 not found no. okay i'm seeing some some shaking of heads so that's good that is an example of a status code and status message or like maybe like 403 uh or yeah 403 forbidden there's like another one or like 401 unauthorized another one these are all status codes and status messages so what is this well a status code is a code that the server sends back in the response that tells you how the request went. So a few ones, like I guess I, I spoiled the bag on a few of these, but like 200 okay, 404 not found, 403 forbidden, 401 unauthorized, 500 server error. Um, you will begin to memorize these. Just through the nature of dealing with this stuff, like you'll start to memorize these. Um, you'll dream about them. They'll, they'll haunt haunt you during your uh, your waking hours. But uh, each of these means sort of a different thing. And these status codes tend to be three digit numbers. Um, the first digit too also has kind of an important meaning. So if the first digit is a two, it means it went well. Like, cool, we got back the data you expected, things went okay. If it was a four, it means we weren't able to give you back what you wanted, but we're pretty, and this is like 
when I say we, this is like the server saying, this is from the server's point of view. The server says, I think that this might be the client's fault. Like the client didn't send the right information. And if it's a five, starts with the fives, that means there was a problem. There was an error handling the request, but I think it was my fault, or I think it was the server's fault. Like I had a problem, sorry. And this is, this is a good little trick, especially when you're getting started, because you don't necessarily have to know all the codes and what each one individually means, because there's a lot of them and they're complicated. And there's a few you're going to start to see a lot, but like there's a lot of them. Um, this sort of trick is a good way to sort of start to break down what you think the code is and what you think it means. There is a large list on Wikipedia of status codes, which I've put in this presentation. Um, this might be one for if you're curious later on after class, or maybe I should have put this in the class notes or something, or Mel's probably going to post it in the in the chat in in uh, in a second here because he's with it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's sort of an interesting read if you're curious more about this stuff. Um, oh, I thought I had one more thing on the status codes. Okay, I guess I didn't. Well, then I guess we're going to go through a few of the common ones just so you're sort of familiar with them. So the, the, the default status code, they're sort of going to see if things go well, like the sort of like, yeah, we gave you the answer you wanted. That's a 200 okay. If you see 200 okay, that's a, that's a sign that things worked out in your favor. Um, so it starts with a two, so it means things went well. Um, it's sort of the first of the 200 series codes. It's kind of the first one that was assigned. The next one you're probably going to see a lot of is 404 not found, which is what I mentioned before. 404 not found means that the path you specified in your request is incorrect. So think of it like you're asking about, you're, try, you're trying to look for a thing that doesn't exist. So it says 404 not found. We can't find the thing you want. So when you see a 404 not found, that usually means you want to take a look at your path and there's something up with your path in your request. 403 forbidden is a bit more of a a uh, behind the scenes one, 401 and authorized R2. I don't think you're going to run into those as much, um, but they're four. So it means that you did something wrong. And if you look at that status list that I linked, you can read more about them. 500 server error, though, is a good one to know about too. Um, so this is, I'm just trying to go through like some of the more common ones from each sort of category. 500 server error means that the server responded with sort of like an unknown error, like an unclassifiable error. Just like something went wrong when we processed your request. It doesn't really fit into any of the other buckets of things. So just like, this is just an error. And generally, if the person writing the server was a little lazy or didn't really understand all the codes, or didn't want to pick something more specific, 500 is going to be the, like the default of like the server didn't work or the server had a problem. The other one I want to mention too is 400 uh, bad request. Now I didn't put that in this list, but I'm going to add it because it's actually probably a good one to have in here. 400 bad request. So you'll notice that each of these that are like the number with zeros after them, like 200, 400, 500, um, they're sort of the generic versions of each. So like 400 bad requests means like something undefined occurred and there was a problem with this request, but I think it was a client issue. Like the client forgot to include like a header or use the wrong method. That might be a different one, but it could be a 400. Um, or like didn't include the right data in the body or skipped the body, just didn't include a body altogether. Um, and typically when you have a 400 or you have a 500 too, these more generic ones, the body of your response will contain the contents of the, the, the like, will sort of tell you like what's actually going on. So like a common thing you might see is like 400 bad requests. You forgot to include a header in your request. Please include that header. So then what you do is you sort of see that and you say, okay, cool. Okay, let me try to make this request again. Well, this next time I'll include the header. So then you include the header and then the next time you get a 200. And you're like, oh, sweet. Okay, that solved the problem. So it's like a common workflow you'll go through in dealing with an, an API that exposes data over HTTP. Cool. Okay. So we are going to make some requests. Um, 
and this is yeah we're we're sort of running through this pretty fast which is which is good so we may end up going on, on to section three Let's see but uh we're going to make some requests to our careers and code.ml server that we were dealing with yesterday now it's running also so yesterday we were using port 4000 but today it's also running on port 80. it's uh http server it sort of can speak that language so we're going to make some requests with netcat um together and hopefully we'll have some success um, i have a feeling that uh I guess like going into this, I'll say the thing that in the past I've had seen students struggle with with this has been, it's really important that you pay attention to details like spacing and capitalization and all that. And if you get that wrong, the, like yesterday I tried to give you like helpful errors when I could, like I wrote that whole protocol so I could sort of like do what I could, but HTTP is gonna be, sometimes kind of terse and not helpful. Like you're gonna sort of give it something and it's not gonna like, it's just gonna like not give you an answer. And you're gonna be like, did it understand what I said? Or what? you're gonna be a little confused and like, that's fine. If you get in a situation where you sort of wanna try again, like you sort of wanna clear everything out and start again, just like yesterday, if you hit control C, that'll sort of terminate your program and you can run it again. So if you, you sort of run that netcat thing, hit enter, start typing it out and you're like, oh crap, I screwed this up. If you hit control C, and then go up, enter, or sort of right retype out that netcat command. You can sort of go through and make your request one more time. Um, cool. So I'm going to get this spun up here, ready to go. So I'm going to go nc careers in code.ml 80. And I'm just sort of doing what, I, what we talked about yesterday. So sort of this is netcat connecting as a client with the connecting to the server of careers and code.ml on that DNS name, sort of finding its way through the internet to the IP address it maps to on port 80. So the HTTP port, that sort of channel of communication, and I hit enter, it should sort of open it up and let me start to do stuff. Cool. And as said, I like, I'd like you to follow along if you can with this, um, and we'll work through it when you have some problems. Okay, so the first request we're gonna make, we're gonna make a get request to slash fruit and no headers. So I'm gonna give you uh, about a minute or minute or two to sort of type out what you think that is. Um, one last thing I'm gonna say is this one's kind of straightforward and should be like one line or so, but you might find that with these few uh, further requests here, you might wanna type out the request in a text editor of some sort, like VS Code, sort of figure it all out, then copy it all to your clipboard, and then just paste it into the terminal. That might be a faster way to go if you're finding you're making lots of typos. Um, but I'll leave it up to you. Whatever you want to do, it's easier. So cool. Give us a shot. Um, we'll come back in a few minutes to take a look. Um, just a, and can you, I opened up, maybe I did this wrong, but I opened up uh, the terminal and I put NC careers and code dot ML. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was supposed to put 80 on there. Yep. I'll redo it. No problem. This is going to give me back apples, comma, oranges, bananas. It is, but don't spoil the surprise. Oh, sure.
Okay. Can uh, folks give me a little reaction in Slack if you've had some success? Or sorry, not in Slack, in Zoom. Wrong, wrong program. So when so I went back to the middle, it, it comes back, back with a four and four and yeah. So could, so could it, it be that I'm not using my laptop to sign my emails because I'm like right now? So I think I'm not I think I might be hearing some feedback. Uh, who was that speaking? Sorry, uh, oh, Alondra. Um, um, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can you hear me? me? I can, I'm hearing an, a bit of an echo though. Um, okay, okay, I'll, I'll repeat that. Hold on. Okay, or if you wanna type it out in the in the chat, it might be easier. It's just, it's a bit hard for me to hear you if you're talking fast and the echo, <laughs> sorry. Um, in the meantime though, Artrell, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I'm having terminal trouble. No problem, let's, so let's take a look. Okay. Uh, all right, so I try to connect and I don't know what I'm doing. I feel like I'm missing a step. Yeah, so you've got a uh, typed nc careers and code that ml80. And then after that, you type nc dash l, I think. But I didn't press enter. All right, so I'm a, I, I'm gonna yeah. leave it at that. I'm hit return. So I just just to be clear, once you've sort of run that NC careers and code ML80, you're connected to the server. You sort of have initiated that TCP connection. Now everything you type is going to go directly to the server. So if you were to type NC L, like that's sort of a command you run on your local system to sort of start a web, to start a TCP server that you could then talk to locally. You don't really need that if you're just talking to a server out there on the internet somewhere. Okay, so what can I type in to to get a response? That's that's where I'm kind of confused right now. Yeah, so if you go to uh, let me check what the slide number was. Uh, gosh, uh, slide ninety three over in your presentation there. Yeah, so take a look at that. So we've got sort of our method, our path, and it sort of says other things there. The goal sort of is for you to take that information up at the top and sort of format that into a request. So I need to type this stuff in and see what I get. Yep, but you want to format it in the HTTP protocol. Like and this? Sort of, yep, and I sort of included those snapshots of the slides below for some hints. But okay. uh, if you type that out um, and you just format it correctly, you should get back a response. And you'll know that you got it right if you see a 200 status code in the response. Okay. All right, I will give it a shot. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, Alondra put something in the chat. She got back a 400. Uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like Alondra, you might have run that NC command twice in a row. So effectively, you tried to send a request to the server, an HTTP request that contained the, the text nc careers and code ml80 that's not a valid http request so you got to sort of type out the, the method the path and the version and all that sort of stuff to make the request work does that make sense ah cool Anybody else I can help out with? Or uh, I, I saw a decent number of thumbs up, but just want to make sure that I'm not leaving anyone in the dust here. Uh, 
Okay. I'm going to assume nothing is a good response given the thumbs up I saw before. So let's go through this together here. Um, if anyone wants me to hold off for another minute or so, let me know. But so I'm going to run my NC curves and code 80 thing. I'm going to connect to the server. I sort of can send whatever I want to it. I'm going to put my request together here. So looking at sort of this example request as, as a way to sort of reference, I've got a, a method, a path, and no headers. So I start with my method. So I'm going to type out get, G-E-T, all uppercase, space, then my path, so slash fruit, then my version, HTTP slash 1.1, and I'm going to hit enter. Now, this is where I type my headers, but I don't need any headers. So I'm just going to type enter again. I'm done. So if it's time to move on, so I'm going to do that. And hey, there we go. I got back a response. So let's take a look at this response here. HTTP 1.1, that's my version. 200 OK. So I see it starts with a two. So that means things went well. And then I see all these headers here. And there's lots of interesting ones, which we're going to talk about some of these uh, in a future class. But let's just say that they include some interesting metadata, which will be helpful in the future. Um, and then I have a body here, apples, oranges, bananas, that got returned from the endpoint. And there we go. So Ryan, I forgot to put in the path. And it still worked. Oh, really? You just did like get space HTTP 1.1? I did. I'm sorry. I did get slash fruit and that's it. Oh. Huh. Wow. It does work. <laughs> My server is a little uh, misbehaving then. You should you should put the version. Um, It might assume HTTP 1.1 if you don't pass it. That's interesting. Huh. Learned something new today. But uh, yeah, generally you want you want to include the version if you can. Sweet. Hopefully that made sense to folks. Um, please stop me if not. But otherwise, I'm going to keep moving because we got a bit more of a fun request coming up here. Okay. So I made a route or a path on the server called text processing frequencies. And you can make a post request to it. And if you give it a, uh, a body text of, a, of an English sentence, it will go through and it will take all the words that it will take the words that English sentence and it'll sort of group them. And it will tell you how many of each kind of word showed up in that sentence. So how many quicks, how many browns, how many foxes, how many thes, things like that. So that's sort of what, what the send point should do. Um, so I'd like you to try to uh, make a request to it, and we'll see how that goes. I should say this one's a little bit more challenging than the last one.
Okay, everybody, how's, uh, how's it going? Success, not success? Hmm, not, not yet. A little more time? Just another minute or two. Okay. So I guess my question is, how do I get to a second line without it thinking that I'm returning it and like sending the request through? Because I had to on one line, but it still didn't work. You mean like, how do you, uh, for the header you're talking about? Yeah, like I wrote post through frequencies, but then if I tried to hit enter and put in the header name or the header value, it just um, said command not found post. Oh, um, are you running the netcat command beforehand? Make sure you're connected to the server before you, you run it. Um, and the way you can be sure about that is you should see uh, when you have netcat open, you shouldn't have a prompt in front of your cursor. You should sort of your cursor should be right at the left side of the screen. If you have a prompt in front of your cursor, like for me, this little uh, theta tilde thing, like that means you're sort of in, in the shell, you're sort of running commands, but you need to sort of have run netcat already and sort of have that executing already before you can start typing out your thing to send to the server. Do I need to type that in before every request? You do. Um... If uh, you want to make it a little easier on yourself, if you hit the up arrow key, it should go to the last command you ran, and then you can hit enter and it'll run it again. That's frustrating. Yeah. So I, w I was typing in the NC careers and code, started to write post, hit return so I could go to the next line, and it kicked me out and said that it was a bad request. Yep. So if it would be helpful, especially with this request, this is sort of a bit of a longer one, it might make sense to do something like uh, like open up VS code. And to type out your request in VS Code beforehand, just sort of uh, uh, can I do that. Oh gosh, um, I'm not that good with VS Code. Uh, um, okay. So like, do something like uh, type out your sort of request in here, however you want to do it, and then uh, copy it to your clipboard and then paste it into the terminal. So like, if I were doing this sort of with the last request, I might do something like get slash fruit HTTP 1.1, and then copy this, and then go over to my terminal, and then paste it and hit enter, or something like that. So leave it up to you, whatever you think is going to be easier.
just so I can get a rough sort of idea, can someone, uh, can anyone give me a reaction if they've had success in one way or another? Okay, I've seen a few, but cool. Still, uh, do I actually have to write header name and then the content length, or do I just write? content length. You just want content length. So if you look at sort of the example requests here over on the left, or sorry, over on the right, wrong direction. Um, you, the way you sort of structure headers is sort of the, the header name and then the colon and the header value. You sort of substitute in the, those sections. So if I had a header called like test and the header value of like example, then it would be test colon space example enter. Does that make sense? Um, I think so. So we're entering text right here. So, okay. Mm, I'm not typing it right. Can I share my screen with you? Yeah, go for it. So I had put this into my notes. And I had post the slash line and then content and length 44. And then I hit a space and I put in a quick brown fox and then I pasted it here and I got this bad request and it closed the connection again. Okay. Well, first of all, 400 bad requests. That means it starts with a four. So there's something going on with your, with what you typed. Sarah's saying you made a mistake. So at least that's good to sort of start with. But, mm -hmm. but looking at sort of what you've typed there, I'm, I'm kind of comparing it to what it was on the slide. I'm noticing a few differences. The first one I want to call out is it looks like, and this might just be the way that it was formatted in the terminal or something, but I'm seeing OST, not POST. So it might be, uh, when, when you give another shot, make sure you sort of type out POST fully. The other thing I'm noticing is you've sort of got on the, you've got post and then a new line, then sort of text processing frequencies. If you look at the slide, you want all that on one line, post text processing frequencies. That's sort of the path of the method in the path. And you also need the version after that too, or at least you should like include it. Maybe the server is not requiring it for some reason, but you definitely should include the version. Let's see, check the slides. 
So it all has to be on one line, the post users HTTP. Correct, all on one line. It looked like you had an editor open where you're typing it out and pasting it in. Um, do you think you could jump over to that if that's the workflow you're using? Mm -hmm. So cool. I, I didn't copy all of that. So I need this. Yeah. It's up here with the HTTP. Yep. You want all that stuff on one line at the very top. And slash And I want these on different lines. Yep, you got that right. Um, also, you need to make sure you have your full message there. Quick brown fox, whatever it was. Oh, yeah, I just, that's all I wrote. Ah, okay. Yeah, what you have there looks roughly correct to me. So I'd say give that a shot and let me know how it goes. Okay. Um, Artrell, I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, so I I got it 200 okay, but on my path, I did a text hyphen frequencies for slash, I mean, processing for slash frequencies. I didn't put in the HTTP forward slash 1.1, but I still got it 200. Yeah. So this is what uh, I think Jennifer had mentioned earlier as well, which is that for some reason, it seems like my server doesn't require a version. And I'm a little perplexed by that because the version is an important part of the protocol, um, but it seems to assume 1.1 if you don't specify it. So I guess like, sort of what you have maybe works, but if you can, you probably should include the version. It's sort of the right way to do it. It looks like my server might be a little bit non-compliant. All right, so after the frequencies would be space, then the HTTP forward slash 1.1, and then go to the next line. Exactly. Or whatever the version is that we're, you're using. Yeah, 1.1 is gonna be what we're gonna use for the whole class. Okay. All right, thank you. Yep. Now nothing happens when I hit enter. Like hit enter I've... one more time. Okay. It just keeps going down the page. Hmm. Share your screen. Let's take a look. Oh, you didn't put in your whole sentence. Quick Don't brown me. fox. What's what's the whole thing in that I put in my presentation? Oh, I can't shorten it and just put in my own thing. No, you got to put in the whole thing. So the, the reason why you got to put in the whole thing, um, and now that you put in all those enters, you're probably going to start the request again. Sorry. But uh, the that so, so we're going to talk about this later on, but there's that content length header, and that tells the server how long your body is. Oh, so yeah. it's expecting 44 characters of body, and you've only given it a quick brown fox that string's worth. So like uh, five, six, 12, like 16 or 17 characters worth. So not, so not enough. Oh, okay. I didn't understand that. that... Yeah, I, I, I'm sort of right now we're just doing this a little bit blind, but we're going to go into that a little bit further on in the class. Okay. I didn't understand that what we typed in had to be specific to the other items. Yep, for sure. Yeah, for all these exercises, just make sure you stick with what's on the slide. Okay. Um, so I I did the the same thing she's um uh, hold on encode ml 80. So I typed it out on my notes. I can I just share my screen if you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. I have so many things open up, but so I typed this up. Mm -hmm. uh, could you make your window a little bit wider there? Just I'm, I'm curious if the. OK, cool. Yeah, and if you paste it in, what do you see? 
huh, it all shows up on one line like that. That's kind of weird. Um, if you go back over to your, your uh, text editor for a second there. Um, Do I put two, right? Yeah, you want to put two. It looks like maybe you have three there now, though. Sort of there's the new line after the 44 and then another new line after that. I think that's the only, the only one you want. Um, for some reason, I'm thinking the editor you're typing this in in the notes thing here isn't like respecting new lines or something. I don't know. I'm kind of confused why what you're typing out in the in your notes isn't showing up over in the terminal like you expect. Mm -hmm. So if you don't mind, take what you have in the notes there and copy it to your clipboard and go into VS Code and open up a new tab and paste it in there and make sure it looks right in there. Hey, Arizona. Yeah. Um, in your HTTP, you forgot the forward slash between the one. Maybe that's what it is. We were getting there, Artrell. <laughs> oh, sorry. But no, good, good catch. Um, and yeah, give it a shot. I think there's there's something else going on though, other than that though. Okay. Um, so quick question. How do you um in the terminal get a new line without pressing enter since pressing enter will run it? Yeah, one, one second. Actually, uh, uh, Exona, you probably wanted to click uh, replace there, but <laughs> okay. see all those like question mark things. Replace all those with new lines. These with yeah. new lines. So, something oh. weird about the way your notes thing is working. It's sort of doing weird stuff to the text. If you so take, it should be like this. Yeah, take that, copy that, paste that in your terminal, and I bet that's going to work. Okay, where is my terminal here? Oh, you gotta run NC first. It's, I think it's already running. No, okay. it doesn't look like it is. You still have a prompt there where it says Exona at Exona's MacBook Air. Okay, oh. I deleted it. Hold on, sorry. Okay. Cool. Yeah, there we go. All right. Nice. Thank you. Um, yep, no problem. I think that was Snyder you were talking. I, sorry, I cut you off there. What was your question? Um, how do you uh, enter a new line without pressing return since return will run it in the terminal? You're talking about in the, the netcat sort of uh, interface? Yeah, yeah. So once you've run Netcat and you sort of you hit enter and you sort of don't see the little prompt on the side anymore, if you hit enter, it's sort of going to just send that to the server. Um, the, the way you can get out of Netcat is by hitting Control C. So it's sort of like when you're in Netcat, enter does what you think enter would do. Enter doesn't run the command. Does that make sense? I'm going to assume yes. Oh, sorry. I muted myself. Yeah, sorry. Cool. Um, sweet. Anybody else having any trouble uh, and you want to work through it? Cool. Well, we've got about five minutes, so I was going to take a break. and. We can either start the next one or we can sort of take a break now and do the next one after we get back. I'll be honest that I only had three of these planned. Um, it seems like though it might be worthwhile to have a bit more practice with this. So why don't I do this? Why don't I during the break uh, write up a few more endpoints you guys can make requests to. I'll sort of log into the server and, and tweak a few things. And maybe uh, also have a couple more challenging examples. So I think I'm seeing a couple of folks who seem to be getting this who I are giving the thumbs up earlier on. And I sort of want to give some ch more challenging ones for folks in that situation. Um, so I'll make like two or three more exercises during the break and sort of try to write those up there. And maybe we'll have some more to practice with. But it sounds like because still there's some folks who are having a little bit of trickiness with this, it would be good to not move on and sort of keep hammering on this and make sure everyone's got it down. Sounds good? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, okay.
So let's do this. Let me uh, let, let's take a break now, um, and let's come back at maybe like seven twenty seven. Eh, I want to give my myself a little bit more time. Let's go seven thirty, just so I, I have enough time to write these exercises and also eat a little dinner. Um, but uh, and then uh, we'll be back at seven thirty, and we'll do the one more exercise I have planned. Maybe like two more, and then we'll we'll call it good. Cool. Sweet. Okay. See you at seven thirty. Oh, thank you, Mel. I'm so bad at the recording thing. Yeah, keep going. Okay. And then I wanted to go to another line, but again, it told me I was wrong. So it kicked me out and I had to do it again. So I put authorization on the same line and the word super secret. Mm -hmm. And when I hit enter, it said I had a bad request and it closed my connection again. Okay. Just let's, uh, would you be willing to share your screen? Let's let's go through it and see. Um, do I have to oh. say name? Say that again? I have to type header name? No, you should be able to just type authorization, colon, and then super secret or invalid password or whatever you want. That's just that that header line, just those two bits. You need a colon between authorization and the super secret. Yep, that's that's all you should need. That's maybe where I'm not getting it right. Let me try that one before we, we look. So you can either choose not to unlock the box by making up something else, or you can use the super secret and unlock the box. Is that the point of this one? Correct. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Because it won't let me unlock the box. Yeah, if you don't give it the right password, you can't unlock the box. Sorry. All right, now I want to share my screen. Sure. All right, so what am I doing wrong here? I got into the server, mm -hmm. typed get slash lockbox HTTP, and you said a semicolon? A new line. So remember, you've got that first line, and you hit enter. And then now you can start typing out all your headers. Yeah, so every time I hit enter, then it will tell me something like, you know, bad request or command not found. If you uh, click in your terminal and rerun that nccareersandcode.ml50. Like right here. Yeah, so notice how when you typed that in front of the command, you have that little percentage sign where it says Jennifer Harris at Jennifer's air. I hadn't been in the server yeah that means you're running that as a command in your terminal and that's not going to work you've got to connect to the server before you run it so if, if you see before the thing you're typing a little prompt like that sort of saying your computer's name and all that it means you don't have the server the, the connection to, with netcat open so i guess that's where i'm confused because i have it open up here yeah and, I, and then that's what it gave me before i tried typing in oh the, um when did you open that? Did you open that during the break? By chance? Uh, I think so, but I've okay. since been the new. Yeah, so I restarted the server briefly during the break so I could publish some new code. Um, mm -hmm. You probably connected to it right when I was restarting it. And it was like, wait a second, there's no server running here and it threw up an error. But so that that's probably what that error is about. Um, you shouldn't run into that again though. 
Okay. Um, before you hit enter here, note you've got get slash lot box. There's no space in between. The formatting here is really important. Seems. Okay, now I'm supposed to go to another line, right? Yep. Now hit enter. Of course it does it now. I'll say if you're having trouble replicating this stuff, it might be helpful to do it in VS Code or an editor. And so type it out as you expect. So was I not supposed to hit enter after authorization to put in super secret? You are not. So if, if you go back over to your, the presentation, you'll see the way the headers are structured. It goes header name, colon, space, value. <laughs> So each header itself is on a new line, or sorry, each like, yeah, each key value pair is on a new line, but the way you separate those on the line is with a colon space. If you take a look at the example post request there, you can see sort of an example with content type and text plane. Uh, in the, on the slides you're on right now, um, the example post request little inset thing on the right. Mm -hmm. So you see there how it says content type text plane underneath that first line? Right. Yeah. That, That's sort of the format you want to imitate. Okay. All right. I'll give it another try. Cool. I'd, I'd really encourage you if you're having trouble to, instead of trying to type out the whole thing every time, to type mm -hmm. it out in the editor first look through, sort of make sure, verify it looks good, and then paste it all in one go. I have a feeling you're going to have a bit more success with that. Yeah, probably. All right, I'll do that. Cool. Um, someone had asked about the, the outline. I thought you all had access to them in Canvas, so I haven't, I, I didn't post it, but I'll post it in Slack after the class too. Um, it's, uh, I filled it out though ahead of time and I think Mel went through it too. Um, it was Jordan and he has it. Oh, okay, never mind. I sent, I sent it to him. Sounds good. <laughs> you have the slides that I sent you. I read your lips. You are muted. Yes, the slides. I, yes, they're right here. All the slides. <laughs> Anybody else I can help out with the, with the exercise? If uh, if we could just get a little thumbs up in in Zoom to see who's figured it out. Yeah, um, I'm having a difficult time with mine. I tried, I tried it different ways, um, but it's not working. Do you mind if I can? Sure, go for share it. My code, my screen. I mean, give me one second. Okay, so I. Oh, that's not what I want. Okay. Anyways, so I have, this is what I have for mine. Okay, that looks and right the, to me. Okay. I swear to God, if this works while you're here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be so Hmm. Yeah, that's that's kind of strange. Okay, try this. Try typing it out by hand. I'm curious if the paste is causing some problem. It shouldn't, but maybe it, it worked is. last time. Um, I can hold on. I gotta quit out of the terminal again. Do if again. you uh, just just you know, if you hit Control C and you've got a command type like that, it'll sort of clear it out for you. Um, oh, con Control C. Yep, Control C will sort of 
get you back to your prompt again, a clean version of your prompt. Okay, so I don't have to do this again. <laughs> Encode that amount 80. Okay, so it's it slash block box HTTP. And so what do I press to, uh, to go one line under? Yep, hit enter. And then type out your header. And hit enter. Ow. Hit enter one more time. Oh, it does give you back a 201. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that worked. Um, I'm not sure why the pasting didn't. I'll be honest with you there, but some based on the way that sort of got formatted when you pasted it, it looked like somehow something wasn't too pleased with it. I know that's not a very satisfying answer. I really don't know what was going on there. No, that's okay. I'll just write it out next time. Continue to write it out. Cool. Thank you. Yep. I saw a decent number of thumbs ups. So I'm probably going to keep moving forward unless anybody else has any other questions. No, I got it. Cool. Um, also, like, if you're just going on this, like, keep going through them. Like, don't feel like you have to sort of stick with me here. I mean, I think folks who sort of keep getting these done early are probably doing that already. But like, it's totally fine. Keep on doing that. Okay. So our next one here, this is another one of the text processing ones. This one is a most common word. And if you give this uh, a body, it'll sort of pick out, it'll return you back a single word, the word that happens the most in that sentence, the one that has the highest frequency, I guess. So this is pretty similar to the, the second one we did. So it's probably going to be, uh, imagine, relatively straightforward, but let's, let's give it a try. It's another good practice of this. Is the goal to get a 200 okay? The goal is to get a 200 okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my terminal, but that's what I keep getting. You keep getting a 200? 
Yeah, 200, okay. HTTP 101, 200, okay. That's good. Okay, cool. That means, I mean, 200 starts with the two. That means you got back what you expected. The server's like doing, yeah, it's, it's, that's what you want. Nope, I saw the, the at the bottom. Got you. I understand yep. now. Cool. Sweet. So I'm, I'm assuming this one, I'm assuming this one's pretty, probably pretty straightforward because it's pretty close to exercise two, like basically just the path changed. So I'm assuming probably most of you have gotten a chance to do this successfully if you did number two successfully. So just give me a quick thumbs up if you've done it, just so I get a status check here. Cool. I'm seeing a decent number of thumbs up, so I'm going to keep moving forward here. Yeah. Okay. Um, ooh, this one. Um, so I'll be honest. At the point we're at now, there's not really too much I can have a server do without doing some more advanced things. So a lot of these are kind of similar. The thing about this one, though, this one I think you might have some fun with because uh, you can do some more advanced things than just the sentence I typed. This was actually a kind of a fun one for me to write. I'm using like some fancy machine learning stuff behind the scenes, whatever, doesn't really matter. But like, so give this one a shot with the sentence I typed there. But I think ideally, like try to put in another sentence, maybe something with the, uh, so, so like, I guess I should also say what this does because I didn't put a description. So this is this endpoint does what's called sentiment analysis. It will look at the sentence you type and it'll give you a value from zero to one or like a percentage sort of of how positive it thinks the sentence is. So if you write a sentence like, I love puppies, that's gonna probably rank pretty high. Or if you did like a sentence like, I hate careers in code, that would probably be pretty negative. Um, I hope you don't hate careers in code, but I don't know. Um, so uh, this is, in hindsight, probably not the best sentence. This was one I just like wrote, wrote while I was half eating dinner and half typing. So uh, yeah, I need to, let me update this and make this a real actual sentence here. Um, let's see. How about like, I liked that before. Uh, I mean, that's I, a sentence. Puppies. Uh, that's 15 characters long. Okay. I like puppies, pippies, puppies. I said 15, right? Yeah, 15. Cool, do that. Um, oh wait, no exclamation point. Eh. So you, you probably have caught on by now, but this, this content length header is the length of the body. So I'm, I'm encouraging you give it a try with something else if you sort of are getting the hang of this here. Um, if you really want a bit of a challenge, Try something like a long bit of text, like a paragraph. Um, keep in mind that if you have text that has new lines in it, has enters in it, each of those enters counts as one character. So if I did something like I space like enter puppies, that would be the same number of characters as I space like space puppies. That makes sense. So give this one a shot. Um, Usually, some inside baseball here, usually when I write stuff quickly and we do it in class, it usually doesn't go well. So this one could very well not go well, <laughs> but we're gonna give it a shot and see. All right, so if I change my sentence, mm -hmm. and I'm doing this in VS Code, I have to count out my spots. Yep, you got to count out the number of characters. Put it in the content links. Okay. There also is a thing, I think. Um, eh, okay, maybe not. Um, if you select some text in, in VS Code, there might be a way you can tell how long it is. I might be able to count them for you, but I can't figure it out off the top of my head.
So what determines it being positive or negative? Is that you? Like, did you determine that or is it a computer determining that? Great question. So this is a computer determining it. Now, the way this actually works behind the scenes is someone, and by someone, probably like an academic researcher, went through a massive list, like a dictionary of English words and sort of noted down how positive or negative they thought they were. And what this is sort of doing is using some statistics to use that and sort of like take into account all the words in the sentence that it has rankings for and sort of aggregate them together to form like a total for that sentence. What you'll that, find, oh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I was just gonna say, that's what you meant by the machine learning? Yeah, so I, I, I'll admit I was saying that without fully thinking through. This actually I don't think is really machine learning. This is more just like statistics. But okay. there, I think there was another part of this. I'm using like a, a third party package to do this because I didn't want to write a big list of dictionary words and all that. So I think there was another thing in that package I was doing machine learning with that I forget. Um, but you'll notice that you should get back a sentiment of 66.67% positive. And if you sort of know your math, you know that 66.6% is, is two thirds. So most likely what it did is it looked at this and it was like, like, that's a word that has positive sentiment. And I and puppies don't really. So it was like, this is like, wait, but I said two thirds. Okay, maybe puppies is positive. I don't know. <laughs> um, but like, it's sort of, uh, it, it took into, like the, the there's a, there's three words, it's two thirds, two of those words that thought were positive is probably what happened. Um, Archel, you got your hand raised. Yeah, you were just, you were just touching on it. So when it says sentiment or percentage and positive based on the words that are in there, it's saying, oh, X amount of percentage of the words have a positive connotation. Yes. Okay. And that's sort of determined through a, a effectively a very large sort of table, like a, a Think of it like a big spreadsheet where you have one column that's like word and one column that's like how positive or it might even just be like is it positive like yes or no or like positive neutral or negative or something okay um, um but where does oh yeah go ahead yeah i just typed in i hate puppies and it gave me negative 100 percent positive so i'm like what yeah i guess i guess i wrote that pretty quickly didn't i <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry, that's what you get with uh, with Ryan eating dinner and typing at the same time code. Um, you warn us. Yeah. Um, but I want to quickly touch on like, where is this helpful? And one place this has actually been used in sort of like real research has been uh, analyzing sort of people's opinions towards certain things in regards to tweets. So this is an interesting thing. If you take tweets from Twitter and you run them through sentiment analysis and you sort of take like the hashtags they're associated with or sort of you do like sent a sentence analysis and pull out like subjects of sentences, you can start to do interesting things where you can be like certain subtypes of people. You can sort of quantify how they feel about certain things based on how they talk about them. Um, and there's been a bunch of sort of interesting research where this has taken this into account. So it's a, it's a cool it's a cool technology and something that, I'll say personally, I haven't dug too much into, but I, I'd love to do more someday. So you get a little bit of an intro into it here. Um, cool. All right. Any, oh, yeah, go ahead. Content length, is that supposed to be words or characters? Content length is the number of characters in your body. Hmm. Okay. So if it's, I like puppies, it's 15, because 15 characters in that, including spaces. All right. So I went to a word counter online and I put it in. Didn't like yeah. me. A word counter is not going to work. It's got to be a character counter. Um, it, it does that too. Oh, okay. So actually, since we're going all command line-y here, there's a command you can run called WC in the command line. This is like way above and beyond. So if you don't want to, you don't want to listen to this, that's fine. But you type a sentence like this is a sentence and you hit control D, it'll give you the number of characters. Um, so that's one option, but 
if you can't tell, I'm kind of a terminal fan. That's kind of a way I tend to do a lot of things. So I, I kind of gravitate towards that stuff, but you may not, and that's fine. Cool. I think uh, largely, I think folks have, have had success with this. I mean, it's kind of the same sort of thing as what we did before. If you've been able to try it with your own phrase though, uh, really good. That's uh, should be a little more fun. Uh, we've got one last one here. It's a little bit different. Um, this is another one of the quickly put together ones. So I wanted to do something with a different method because we've done a lot of gets and posts and in practice it wouldn't really be a put as much, but I was just like, let's let's do a practice with something different. And the uh, the path is slash dump headers. And this one, we're going to specify two headers, hello and world. And this is a header, and this is the value. Notice the second header name is in that train case we talked about. So uppercase every letter, and then dashes in between. And then, uh, yeah. So the, what this endpoint should do is it should give you a list, sort of give you back all the headers you specified. So give this a shot and uh, we'll see how it goes. Hey, dear, quick question. You know, in the other ones where yeah. we would have to put in the content length, and in this one, and some of the other ones, the content length is automatically read. So, like, what's happening there? Yeah. So, in general, content length is a header that when we get sort of into more, I mentioned earlier that this is not really how you make requests. Like, this is kind of the the like longhand, we're teaching you how to do long division thing in math. And then tomorrow we're going to talk about how to use a calculator. Like this is sort of that, like, so in general, that content length header will be generated for you by tools that make these requests. Okay. Um, we're typing it out manually because it needs to be there. Um, but if you don't have a body, you don't really, it's not a requirement. Like it sort of assumes content length zero if none is specified. Gotcha.
so I entered all of mine in and then it doesn't show up anything. It just shows up as my name. Is that what it's supposed to do? Uh, say that one more time. I entered everything in the way that it's on here, um, but then it shows up nothing. Uh, maybe share your screen. I'm curious to see uh, what's going on there. Yeah, can you stop sharing oh. your first? Yeah, sorry. Uh, stop. There we go. Hmm. Give it one more shot. So, so I should say that uh, one thing that it's possible will happen is uh, normally when things make requests. Oh, if you're gonna give another shot, you gotta do the netcat. Start that up again. Oh, so your, your prompt okay. there. Yeah. Um. So typically, these requests are made sort of at like lightning speed by a computer. It'll sort of enter all this text very quickly. And for that reason, it's not really the sort of thing where like, you're not supposed to make these requests super slow. So a lot of systems will actually time out. They'll sort of like be like, you've had this connection open for like 30 seconds now and you haven't sent anything. And it's just like, okay, you're not gonna send anything. I'm just gonna like shut off my connection to you. We haven't just, we haven't talked, so we're probably not gonna ever talk. And for that reason, it's like a, a little bit, uh, it makes it a little bit hard. I've tried to tweak the server to avoid that. I've sort of told it like, actually, no, make your timeout really large. But it's very possible that I didn't do that quite right. <laughs> okay, so. Um, hit enter, hit enter one more time. There we go. Yeah, I did. I'm so glad that I'm the person that, you know, terminal seems to have a problem with. Yeah, I, I don't have an answer for you there. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Mm -mm. You are not the only one. So is it just supposed to reproduce the header? Yeah, so if you look at uh, uh, Exona's screen here, you can see that it says down there headers, hello world, this is a header, and this is the value. So that's sort of the, the body of the, the response. It contains sort of a, a printout of all your headers. Dump headers, dump out your headers, kind of maybe make sense, print them out. I don't know. Um, but it, I was like, wait, it didn't dump anything. I thought it was going to get rid of a header. Ah, uh, okay. The way you can know it worked is you see that HTTP 1.1, 200 okay. So you know sort of it got a response back to you. If you no. see that, you're good. I saw that and I was like, I guess that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. Um, cool. I think that's the last one I got here. So that's about all I had for today. Um, just as a preview for tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to be talking about sort of the calculator here. We did the long division. How do we do this for real? We're going to talk about some tools you can use to make HTTP requests. Um, real tools, not like we're sort of at this point, we're kind of done with Netcat for the class. We might jump back into it periodically here and there, but really it was just sort of a way to sort of show you the inner workings of what's going on. But my hope is that at this point, you'll sort of have enough of an understanding or can sort of jump up to sort of the power tools and do things that are more, a bit more abstract. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about two ways to make requests using uh, some other fancy tools called Postman and Curl. And then uh, then Thursday, we're going to be at Open Hack. And uh, yeah, that'll be fun. So cool. Any questions before we get moving here? Mm -mm. Just, um, I just wanted to make a comment about the Open Hack. Mm -hmm. Like Exona said before, if anybody wants to bring anything um, to kind of share, as a group or as the class for whoever goes to do kind of like our Christmas get together. Um, um, since a lot of us are probably gonna be going out of state or doing other stuff with family members pretty soon. After that, it's gonna be the only time that we could probably get together or to talk or to do anything. Um, I am making um, Coquito 
and um, arroz con dulce. Mm -hmm. So I'll be bringing those two things if anybody else wants to bring something that kind of reminds them of the holidays um, to share with the people there. That's really cool. Yeah. I'll be there. I'll bring something. I don't know what, but I'll bring something. Yeah, I'll see if I can make it also. It'd be really fun to actually be all in person again. I'm curious, have you folks actually met each other in person yet? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Nice. You're all really cool people. Yeah, I'll say in the past, like careers in code has tended to attract a very interesting subset of society that I, I found I get along with pretty well. <laughs> Definitely more so than other groups of people I get along with. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, I think that's about it then. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to me in Slack. Uh, I'll post the outline afterwards in the channel. But otherwise, uh, see you tomorrow and have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Right. See you. Bye.